the first days of Nazi rule, education was central to Hitler's thinking. Throughout Germany, schoolchildren were taught about the superiority of the Aryan race and how the Third Reich would dominate the world for a thousand years. Was wir vom kommenden Deutschland ersehnen und erwarten, das müsst ihr, meine Jungs, erfüllen. Nazi leaders quickly realized that normal schools would not be sufficient to groom the future rulers of the thousand-year Reich. They decided to establish selective schools to create a new elite. We were to be the future political leaders of Germany. That was the school's goal. The schools were run like army barracks. War games were as common as traditional lessons, and the boys were pushed to their physical limits. Toughness was the order of the day. Any display of weakness was despised. There was no pity. Boys were taken on school outings to Jewish ghettos and concentration camps. Trust no fox in the woods. Trust no Jew on his oath. That was essentially it. The evil Jew kept turning up. For us, it was a given that Jews were evil. This is the story of Hitler's elite schools, the breeding grounds for the next generation of Nazi rulers. April 1933, Hitler received a unique birthday present. The Nazi Education Ministry created a new type of school. They called them Institutions of National and Political Education, Napolis for short. They wanted to mould political fighters on the basis of National Socialist ideology. Men who could later be used to work in all areas of the state and society. The Napola boys would be the vanguard of Hitler's new Aryan master race and central to his plan of spreading Nazi ideology around the world. In these schools, da holen wir die talentierten Kinder hinein, die Kinder unserer breiten Masse. Arbeitersöhne, Bauernsöhne, wo die Eltern niemals es bezahlen könnten, dass ihre Kinder ein höheres Studium mitmachen. Wir haben ein fast fantastisch anmutendes Ziel und schwebt ein Staat vor in der Zukunft, bei dem jede Stelle vom fähigsten Sohn unseres Volkes besetzt sein soll. Ein Staat, in dem Geburt gar nicht ist und Leistung und Können heilen. It was Hitler's intention that the Napola boys would become the new ruling class of Europe. They were destined for the top jobs in politics, industry, and above all, the military. You're the best, they said. The word elite came up a lot. They wanted to motivate us. You're the elite, the hope for the future. The job for us in our... The job for our class was Gauleiter in Siberia. That was drummed into us. Heinrich Himmler, head of the SS, took a personal interest in the Napola schools. Himmler was already using military academies to turn young men into elite SS fighters. Now he planned to use the Napolas as feeder schools. He was determined to attract the very best pupils. Listen, my boy, the Führer is starting a new school. You're doing well and your parents are Nazis. They want children like that. You'd love it, my little Aryan flag bearer. 
candidates had to attend selection camps that were more about physical determination and courage than intellectual prowess. Admission to the schools was seen as a great honor. Of course, I was very proud. I could tell my classmates, and I was happy my parents were pleased. I won't say I was quite in seventh heaven, but I was immensely happy I'd passed the difficult tests. Boys were drilled to believe they were part of an elite new breed. We proudly bear Hitler's name and want to be the very best. No one asked where we're from, what matters is the boy alone. The half-hearted are left behind, we sing and march in step. If the Aryan race is the best, and the German people are the best of the Aryan race, and if we're the best of the Germans, then we're the best in the world. Arriving at school was a shock to the boys, many of whom had never before spent time away from home. The new clothes were like an army uniform, and classes were called platoons. The first thing we had to learn was to obey. This was supposedly because only someone who can obey can give orders. There were frequent dormitory checks, kit inspections and flag days. We marched from morning till night. After we were woken up, we went to the yard and lined up for early morning sport. We did sport together and then showered. Then we got dressed, lined up and marched to breakfast. Then we went to our rooms, lined up again and marched to our lessons. The discipline was designed to break down individuality. You're nothing. Your nation is everything. The individual no longer counted. The only thing that counted was the community, which marched to prescribed rules. The philosophy was simple. Everyone should learn both to give and to obey orders. Boys dealt harshly with anyone who wouldn't conform. We beat up one boy. I can still see the red wheels on his back because we hit him with our leather belts. Tests of courage became part of the daily routine. If you showed weakness, you were a sissy, a coward, a disgrace to the whole squad or the whole legion. We had to jump off a 10-meter board, fully equipped with rucksack and helmet. When you hit the surface of the water, the helmet's chin strap would almost rip your head off. We were given the order, jump. First, I had to find the courage to jump into the unknown. Second, I had to trust that the person giving the order wouldn't let me jump to my death, unless it was absolutely necessary. That might happen later, when I was a soldier. 